Hello everyone. According to diffusion of innovation theory, a society adopts the technology step by step. First, there are a group of people who adopts the newest trends and they are called innovators, followed by early and late majorities. The last to adopt technology, they are called laggards. Everett Rogers, a professor of communication studies, he populated a theory in his book Diffusion of Innovation, and he proposes five main elements influence the spread of a new idea. Innovation itself, adapters, communication, time, and a social system. So if we look at cloud computing, companies are at different stages of adoption. But one thing is for sure, businesses would have to shift to the cloud. So the question is, why do businesses consider on-premise and cloud to cloud migration. Hi, my name is Rehan Ahmed, and I am the business development executive at Crest Technology. And I have with me Irfan Bhatt, the CEO of Crest Technology, and Bakar Hussain, the director of IT services. So thank you, gentlemen, for joining me to discuss this topic. Thank you, Rehan. Thank you, Rehan. So Bakar, before we jump into the details, can you explain what is the difference between on-premise or cloud? Rehan, the fundamental difference between a cloud and on-prem software is where it is installed. Locally, the servers for the company are hosted on the vendor server or the cloud service provider. With the on-prem server, the company owns the full ownership, the privacy, but on the other hand, it is costly. They have to manage the security. They have to manage the hardware and the infrastructure cost. However, on the cloud, they just only have to buy the storage space or infrastructure being on the rental. They don't have to worry about the security. They don't have to worry about the backup and they can have more time focused on their business core strategies. However, on the on-prem, they have to they have to have a pressure of managing the security, the backup, and then the infrastructure. So Irfan, continuing this, so what do you think? What is the difference between cloud computing or software as a service? Well, Rehan, um, let's first understand the difference between on-premises application uh, management and uh, cloud computing because there's some confusion. On-prem applications or systems, you're responsible for everything. That includes the networking, the storage, the servers, the virtualization, the operating system, uh, uh, the middleware, uh, the database, the application, everything, you're responsible for maintaining it and managing it. Whereas in uh, uh, the cloud computing, uh, most of these things uh, or some of these things you're not responsible for. So to differentiate between uh, cloud computing and SaaS, please understand that uh, SaaS is one of the offerings within cloud computing, right? Uh, SaaS is software as a service. Uh, in SaaS, uh, the vendor who's providing the software as a service is responsible for everything, whether it is networking, storage, servers, virtualization, operating system, middleware, database, and applications. The vendor is responsible for maintaining all of this. Okay, so that's SaaS, but cloud computing is more than SaaS. There is also cloud computing for platform as a service and infrastructure as a service. So, what are those? Well, platform as a service. The um, service provider is responsible for everything except the application layer and the data database. So uh, in that situation, of course, uh, you know, you have less to worry about. You just take care of the application and the data. Um, then there is infrastructure as a service, which is one step below in which the uh, provider is responsible for the networking, storage, servers, and virtualization, and you're responsible for everything else. So that's the difference. And some examples of SaaS versus uh, platform as service and infrastructure as service. So SaaS example would be 
like let's say SharePoint Online with Microsoft 365, that's software as a service because you have everything, right? That uh, handled through the um, through the vendor. In this case, Microsoft, um, Google Workspace. Google is responsible for everything. It's software as a service. There are some business application, for example, for real estate, um, Yardi, MRI, uh, Entrada, RealPay. You know they offer software as a service. Uh, some of them offer, uh, you know, um, on premise uh, as well, but they also offer software as a service. Uh, platform as a service. Uh, an example would be that you know you can get the platform as a service from. Microsoft Azure or Amazon, and there are a lot of other suppliers also for platform as a service where you only worry about the application layer. You have your own web applications and you just worry about those. Everything else is taken care of by the provider. Infrastructure service, as you know, you can get um, uh, servers, vir v virtual servers, VMs in the cloud from different providers, including Microsoft Azure and uh, Amazon Web Services, so that's an example of infrastructure as service. So uh, all these offerings uh, are part of cloud computing. Okay, so Bakar, knowing this, what do you think, what are the key factors compelling businesses and specifically real estate companies to migrate to the cloud or SaaS? Yeah, there are many factors, but the key factors, what I can say, are the uh, as business are getting globalized after the COVID, there are many companies who had uh, regulate the work from home strategy. Now, going on the global scale, business need to have their resources available for the people throughout the throughout the uh, different locations, and having the on-prem server. Uh, providing the VPN access or hosting on the uh, public internet, it's it's more difficult for them to manage it. And with the cloud, they will have the 24 by 7 access available for anyone from anywhere and from any device. Business grow and then they have to scale the operations or the infrastructure which require a lot of upfront cost. However, on the cloud, they don't have to pay the upfront cost. They can simply with a single click upgrade the servers without any problem. In terms of the cost, as I mentioned, the on-prem is more expensive than SaaS. It's not only about the infrastructure, they have to manage the backup, they have to manage the security uh, on the on-prem. However, on the cloud and the SaaS, the vendor is going to manage all the uh, hardware costs. They, they are going to manage the hardware scalability as well. And then, as I mentioned about the backup, for the on-prem server, they always have to have the backup ready or available either on the same location or on a separate location or a remote location because keeping the backup on the same location is not a good idea. On the cloud, you have very flexible backup plans which can be stored on the same region or it can be saved on the different region as well, which is also going to give you a good disaster recovery. So the most important part is the cyber security. Cloud service provider employs security measures that the company would find extremely high if it had, has to be done in-house. They always make sure that the cyber security is up to date. They have better measures for the uh, cloud infrastructure, and it will be difficult for the on-prem client to to implement on their simple server structure. And then there is compliance. The on-prem infrastructure client has to maintain or manage their securities policies for the uh, industry specific compliance requirement. However, on the cloud, the cloud vendor is going to take care for all the necessary policies and the requirements which has to be met for the regulatory and the compliance requirement. All right, so Irfan, how Chris can determine for an organization whether to use on premise or cloud based systems? Yeah, so um, Rehan, um, uh, we have decades of experience uh, 
implementing all kinds of systems, whether on premise or cloud based, uh, depending on your business requirements and the nature of technologies involved, uh, we can help you determine the best approach that fits your needs. In addition, um, we offer proactive support for the health of your network, uh, your systems, so that you don't have to uh, face any operational challenges. Um, you know, many of our new clients face uh, these type of challenges. Their IT support worked reactively uh, since they would wait for problems to happen uh, and then fix them. Um, our approach uh, is, is to be proactive. See, the reactive approach is costly, it's counterproductive. Uh, with a proactive approach, uh, we take action to prevent the operational challenges from ever happening. Uh, this is what makes CRESS technology stand out compared to uh, your typical uh, managed service providers. We take action to prevent operational challenges from happening. We take a proactive approach to remotely monitor your network resources, perform routine preventative maintenance on your devices, your systems, and manage user access, cybersecurity, email services, and administration of your business applications. Okay. So viewers, there you have it. The traditional way of implementing and maintaining the servers has been on-premise or on-prem softwares. And the examples can be applications such as SAP or Oracle, Dynamic CRM or MRS software installed on servers at the business owned locations. As an experienced IT service provider, Crest can help you determine the best course of action to fit your business needs, whether it's to migrate to cloud or improve your on premise environment. Please contact us for a free IT service analysis of your organization and get started. Thank you very much. The small to mid-sized business community is no stranger to IT operational challenges, cybersecurity, disaster preparedness, 24 by seven support. Addressing these challenges require technical specialization and business knowledge. That's why smaller organizations need Cress IT services, including CIO services, cybersecurity, infrastructure, desktop, and Microsoft 365 support. Our services are a combination of strategy, remote monitoring, preventative maintenance, hands on support, and user training. Contact us today for a free analysis of your IT services.